Dozens have died, including six police officers, in the continued anti-government protests in Sierra Leone as hundreds took to the streets in frustration at economic hardship and a perceived failure by the government to cushion the impact of rising prices. The death toll has now risen from the previous day's clashes as uh, shocked citizens uh, stayed mostly behind closed doors in the capital, Freetown. Hundreds of people have been taking part in the demonstrations in Freetown and in places such as Makeni and Kamakwe in the opposition's northern stronghold. According to the police, the nighttime curfew enforced on Wednesday will remain in place. Let's now bring in Sierra Leonean journalist and media consultant Abdul Malik Bangura, who joins us virtually from Sierra Leone. Thank you for your time and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good morning, all. Morning it's to you. Closely, it's closely coming to 6.30 a.m. here in Freetown, and it's been very raining today. Oh, wow. Okay, well, thanks for making our time, you know, to be with us. It's been two days of what can be described as catastrophic for uh, the West African country, Sierra Leone. Deaths recorded, internet, you know, has been shut down, and of course, uh, more calls for the president to step down. Can you give us a feel of what the entire situation is like over there? It is, um, I will not say it's been two days off, but I will say it's, it's been two days after. Because yesterday was relatively calm here, and we saw a lot of police patrolling major streets in Freetown. And even um, just last night, the president um, was on BBC granting an interview. Unfortunately, he hasn't addressed the public officially but he was on dbc um, making some few statements with regards to some of the measures that have been taken by his government to cushion some of the economic effects on the lives of the people which was one of the fundamental problems that led to the protest on uh, on wednesday but the president was insistent to say that what happened on wednesday was not a demonstration neither was it a protest he said it was a terrorist attack on his government. That was the statement he used. And that statement also was reaffirmed by his foreign affairs minister, Professor David Francis, who also said that it was a foreign, uh, it was a terrorist attack. But uh, some were saying that uh, during the statement made by the foreign affairs minister, whilst updating the diplomatic corps, in Sierra Leone yesterday with regards to the protests that happened on Wednesday. Some of the de diplomats were unhappy with the term terrorist being used. So they were like um, having some dissent on some of the statements being made by some government officials. But the major problems we, problem we have in Sierra Leone, as it is, of course, the protests we are held in opposition strongholds in Sierra Leone, particularly with regards to the eastern part of Freetown, where unfortunately I stay, <laughs> and also the northern region of the county um, in Makeni happens to be the heartbeat of the APC party. And of course, Kamakwe also is another major, major town that um, the APC has under its belt as a stronghold. Um, last night, there was a statement, there was a national curfew, because even as we are now, currently there is still a national curfew, starting from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And I think it is now 6.30 in the morning, so we are still on national curfew. So those that are going for their normal businesses, some that will have to wake up at 5 to be able to catch up with work are being disturbed because you can't go out until 7 a.m. But the problem is the curfew was instituted nationwide despite the part of the country that you are in. But yesterday, the regional police in the east, which happens to be the SFPP or the ruling party stronghold, invoked the curfew. They said that there is no curfew in the east of the county, where we have three districts, Kono, Kailau, and Kenema districts, all okay. of which are the Wuli Party's stronghold. They have revoked the curfew, which means there is no curfew in the eastern part of Sierra Leone. 
We are still waiting for the police in the south, which is also a ruling party stronghold that has four districts, Bo, Moyamba, Bont, and Pujion. We need to hear whether they themselves are going to allow the coffee to continue or they are going to revoke the, the curfew in the south. Abdul Malik, what I see, yeah? I, I'd like to ask you, I mean, you've given us a, a full picture, a clear picture of how this is being enforced in Sierra Leone. The major reason for this protest, according to what we are hearing, is the rise in prices of commodities. How long has this been happening and how bad has it gotten? Give us an actual picture of what the reality is in Sierra Leone. Okay, we all know that there is a Ukrainian crisis. As soon as, which happened, I think, three or four months ago, in Sierra Leone, within one month, there was 100% increase in the price of fuel, which automatically led to the increase in price of commodities in the country. Within one month, everything spiraled out of control. A lot and lots of things went up, including traps, transport fears, and all. Most of the people in the east of the country, where the protests happened, had to travel to the CBD, which is the central business district, using commercial transport and all. Commercial transport goes to 100%. What was um, 2,000 leons became 4,000 leons. So it was very difficult situation in the, this part of the country. But to say that the protest um, on Wednesday was basically about some economic situation of the country, I think it would be very much unfair. Because when you look at the, some of the calling, some of the bank, the cards that were used by some of these protesters, you find out that there was no uniform message. In Kenema, let me say, in McKinney, for instance, the people in McKinney, we are, we are not looking at the economic effects, of course. The protest in McKinney, which is the Northern Regional Headquarter of Sierra Leone, was basically about fundamental human rights. Most of them are saying that fundamental human rights are not being protected, and therefore they are calling on the president to step down. For them, there are several allegations, several points they placed out. There was a time here when um, 10 opposition members of parliament were removed from parliament and replaced by um, ruling party agents. It became the first time in the history of Sierra Leone when the court will have to appoint members to sit in parliament. So for them, it was a violation of fundamental human rights. And about two years ago, there was a fracas in McKinney, particularly with regards to um, uh, uh, an electricity transformer that was, was moved from McKinney to another town in the northeast, northwest of the country, which is Lunge. The people came out and were protesting that the, the, tra the transformer should not be moved to Lunge about eight youth we are shot and killed on site. Wow. So, so about about a week ago, there, there was an anniversary of those those murders. About uh, a week ago, there was this two year anniversary. So people were like saying that eventually people will have to come out in McKinney in in in, in commemoration or whether it is sympathizing with the relatives of those people that were killed. So they came out. Their anger was basically about not protecting the fundamental human rights of Sierra Leoneans. Abdul That's Malik. what they came out for. But Ab in Freetown, the call was different. All right. In Freetown, they were calling for the, the economic situation to be addressed. That is why when you look at the protest in Freetown, we are mainly orchestrated by right. the petitioners, the people in the market, 
Yeah. We are the ones who came out in Freetown. Yeah. All right. Um, it, it sounds like, you know, there's so much, you know, that needs to be unraveled, you know, with regards to Sierra Leone and, you know, what the people are dealing with and, of course, the government's response. But, of course, we would have to bring you back again, you know, at a later time. Uh, of course, I know that you're going to continue to monitor the situation, so we'll, we'll definitely have you again. Thank you very much for your time this morning and we wish uh, our Sierra Leonean brothers and sisters the very best.